Hi, everyone. I am Sarisa Richardson, one of the business uh, coaches at the Wise Women's Business Center, where we provide free one-on-one -on -one coaching um, to women in, um, in our area as a part of a phenomenal of the phenomenal programming that we provide at the Wise Women's Business Center. So thank you all for joining. Um, and today we have Kate Michaels, our resident expert, um, here to talk about small business financing and debt management. So Kate, welcome. Thanks for having me, Sarisa. It's an honor to be here spending time with you all this afternoon. Of course, it's such a joy to have you on, especially to talk about a topic that is so important, especially right now. Um, as a small business owner, we're always we're managing so many things, right? Um, but financing and access to capital and managing that capital when you get it is always tends to be this balancing act. Um, for for business owners, so I think this is such a relevant topic for right now. Yeah, I would agree. Certainly, something that's on the minds of many individuals on a personal level, but certainly if you're a business owner, even more so. Yeah, it's on my mind every day for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we like open up, Kate? Uh, tell us a little bit about who you are, your um, experience in this industry, and just a high level um, introducing us to this topic of debt management as a small business owner. Yeah, absolutely. So as Teresa mentioned, my name is Kate Michaels, and I am a financial advisor with Northwestern Mutual here in Syracuse. And I've been in the industry now for over 13 years and work with many individuals, many families, but also many small business owners when they're thinking about how to manage um, personal finances, but also as it relates to their business finances as well, and sometimes both. Um, and so when I think about this topic and, and even myself in running a business, I think about how do you create an asset? And so that's our goal for most of us, right? To build something that you all ultimately can sell or transfer or um, you know live off of, essentially. Mm -hmm. So when we're thinking about this topic of debt and financing and what could that look like, um, first and foremost, I think it's something really important to know that you shouldn't be ashamed of the fact that you need to be in debt. Um, you know, most business owners are in some form of debt, um, you know, either when they're starting or as they're growing or expanding. Um, so it's, it's really something that's critical in order for people to scale and grow their businesses, but also thinking about, um, you know, really kind of creating a net worth um, mm. for your business. So like, what's your value? What are your assets and what are your liabilities? So thinking about kind of your business balance sheet um, mm. and that's, you know, most likely going to be a part uh, of that balance sheet. I love, I love that you opened with the stigma of debt because there is a bit of a, a negative connotation attached to it. Although I like to, to say it's a tool, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of the many tools in our toolbox as a business owner. Um, and we, we should look at it as just that. So I, why don't we open Kate with this concept of good debt versus bad debt? Cause I do think that's a thing. Um, what do you think? Is there a such thing as good debt versus bad debt? And how do you think we should look at that as business owners? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. There is a difference between good, bad, good debt and bad debt, kind of like good stress and bad stress. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, so, it, you know, again, it's, it's something that you shouldn't be ashamed or fearful of because it's kind of a necessary evil as far as, you know, growing and operating. Very few people are fortunate to have enough capital just to, you know, pick up and start their business. Right. Um, so bad debt, I would think about it. And again, there's, it's very similar to what we experience on the personal side of things. Like bad debt might be, you know, credit card debt that you're carrying a balance or is a really high interest rate. And, you know, if you're not paying off enough of that principal, you're going to continue to compound the interest. Um, and ultimately, it's going to increase the amount that you end up owing. Um, so that would be an example of a bad debt. A good debt might be something like a mortgage that you have on the building that you own to run or own or operate your business, or let's just say you have a critical piece of equipment that breaks down and you need to take out a loan to purchase that piece of equipment. Otherwise your business can't continue to be viable. Mm -hmm. uh, so those would be examples of good debt, you know, something that's like a low interest loan um, that's specific to help you um, grow or advance your, your business. So, you know, I, there were a couple of, 
tidbits in there that I picked up. One is looking at interest rates mm-hmm. um, when you're you're com- comparing your debts um, in order to sort of categorize the good versus bad. And then the other is this concept of growth, like mm-hmm. taking out financing or seeking out financing to help grow your business. Right. Um, what about Kate? I'm gonna throw for a loop because. I, you know, I actually got this question um, from one of my custom, one of my clients, one of our business coaching clients is what about taking out debt to operate your business? Is that a good or a bad thing? Um, and I know that's a very high level question. Um, when you think about as a business owner, you should, your business, right, should be covering its operating expenses. But at a time like COVID, where for many reasons, you know, mark, market conditions and all of the things, when your business is not covering its operating expenses, would you consider that um, as a bad debt to take out? I mean, not necessarily. And it goes back to, you know, you might have something that you know, is really unexpected that comes up, like, for example, the, you know, breaking of a piece of equipment that you can't, you can't function without. And if you don't necessarily have the capital and reserves, you know, taking out a working capital loan or something to that effect, where maybe it has an advantageous interest rate, and you have a plan to pay that back off, and you know that you are going to generate enough revenue to make that investment worthwhile. Um, certainly I think that those are options you need to consider, especially if it comes down to like, do I keep my business or do I take on debt? You know, you're going to, you're going to have to make those types of, um, decisions certainly. And and what I love about what you just said is your business owners should be thinking about how to make the investment worthwhile, right? Mm -hmm. So they should be, we should be looking at this as business owners, ladies, we should be looking at at our debt as an investment into our business. So mm-hmm. I like to say that to my, um, my clients, you know, many times we are our first and our primary investors in our, our businesses, right? I'm investing with my own money to start up and all of these things. But then there are other types of investors, your lenders and your creditors and private investors. So I agree, you should be looking, when you're thinking about taking up, out a debt, um, taking out a loan or any other form of, of debt, you should be thinking about that as an investment to your business in um, how do you plan to use it? So you should have a plan, you know, mm-hmm. like how are you going to use it? Um, another thing that I heard from you is sometimes things come up. So it might, you're, you may need to take out a loan or financing to cover your operating expenses, even though traditionally you'd like to think that your business is covering those. But in the cases that it's not, in my engineering days, I call those special cause uh, yeah. situations. Um, in those special cause situations, you know, that's when as a business owner, you may turn to other forms of um, capital. So some debt. Mm-hmm. 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 Absolutely. But what about Kate, when it turns into like bad habits? So when I'm, when these special cause situations quote unquote, keep popping up and it turns into a bad habit. What would you say are some tools that we could use to manage our debt and to make sure that we're not, um, that we're not leaning on these bad habits? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great question. Probably the best thing that I would suggest so that you don't create bad habits when it comes to debt, um, or money management. And again, it's, it's not really any different than what personal life and personal spending is discipline and really Mm -hmm. evaluating these necessary costs in order to run and operate my business or is this kind of a a want versus a need so you need to think about those things as well Um, and as business owners you really should be making sure depending on your scale of course you may have you know CFOs or you know other individuals who are managing your finances for you uh, which is okay, but you as the business owner still need to make sure you're taking ownership of reviewing and um, looking at those reports on at least a monthly, if not weekly or daily basis to say, okay, where are we? How are we tracking? Kind of get ahead of some of these things. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it can be, again, tempting to delegate those things because just because you're a business owner doesn't mean you're necessarily loving the the financial starting a business. So, again, it can be tempting to have somebody else kind of take care of those things, but um, really make sure you're making sure that you're on top of that and having a good checks and balances for, okay, where's the money going? 
are we spending money on critical things? What investments should we be, we be making? Is there a good return on that investment? Um, and then ultimately, you know, as you as you have really great months um, or exceed goals, you know, maybe you look at uh, paying down some of those debts quicker and um, taking care of some of that. So, I mean, what a, one of the challenges that I find a lot of business owners have, especially um, business owners who are creatives, so like artists or graphic designers, those kind of things, is we tend to want to be in that creative space, you know, living our business, right? Um, but then there are these business owner things like <laughs> looking at balance sheets and ma managing your, your um, cash flows and things like that, that it's like you said, it's very easy and tempting to say like, oh, I'll just have my bookkeeper do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about, you had mentioned before during one of our conversations, a um, debt management plan. Um, that I feel like for business owners, especially small business owners who don't really have a lot of time, especially creatives who are just not into all of these numbers and things, but we have to be as business owners, that seems like a really simple and easy concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, um, a, a lot of times people might think, oh, well, if I'm getting into, you know, debt or I have a large uh, debt burden to carry, or maybe I have a bunch of different loans that it makes sense to consolidate. And I would say sometimes that can be really tricky and it, it might not, not always be the best thing to do because, you know, it might um, extend the terms of your loan and then would create, uh, can create more bad habits because now you think, oh, I have a, you know, one loan payment, maybe my interest rate is a little bit um, lower and now I can free up more um, credit to then go and, and, and more. So, you know, you want to make sure that it, that's uh, something you consider before you get into some type of debt consolidation. So I would say that that's not always the best thing to do. Um, but instead, evaluate what debts do you carry? What are the interest rates on all of those debts? What are the balances on all those debts? And looking looking at either what we would call an avalanche style of paying off that debt or a snowball style of paying off that debt. Um, so a snowball, you know, might be taking um, you know, the, the lowest, the lowest balance and paying that off first. So you feel like you've got some momentum and, you know, you're achieving some success there, you know, whereas Avalanche, maybe you take uh, something with the highest interest rate and pay that debt off first. So, you know, you're having different, uh, ways of looking at how do I start chipping away at some of those debts and doing so in a really strategic way. And I, I love that because again, it's all about planning and being strategic. And that's where, when you really get into me to the meat of managing your business mm -hmm. um, as a business owner. So I'm imagining, you know, because my analytical side of my brain, I'm imagining a spreadsheet, right? Yeah. It looks like a list of all of your debts, how you use them, right? So what, what was your original plan? So I took out this debt to, you know, maybe I'm a chef and I wanted to buy, uh, build a commercial kitchen, you know? Mm -hmm. So this debt did that. And then what was my return? And then what are the interest rates? And then again, lining those up and deciding when and how you're gonna pay those, pay those off. I really, I love that, Kate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, some people to your, you, you know, you have that great uh, engineering mind and you're thinking <laughs> analytically and you're probably one of the very few people I've ever met that handles the creative side so well and the number side so well. Um, you're a unicorn, as you know. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I would, these, the point that I would say to that is maybe if that's, again, not your strength, like, don't be afraid to ask for help there. Again, just like there's no shame in having debt. There's no shame in asking for help. Great business owners have a team of resources that they can access at any point in time. So individuals like myself that are financial advisors, you know, individuals who work in, you know, local banks or, um, you know, if you have a, another business owner mentor, like, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, you know, yeah. especially if it means the difference between your business succeeding or not. Um, you know, although, again, it, it can be a little humbling to do so. It's probably uh, more important to, to get the help than not have a business. And I feel like now more than ever, you know, because COVID has thrown such a wrench into so many um, of our strategies as small business owners, um, it's really affecting us as small business owners, right? Not to say that it's not expect affecting 
larger businesses, but it's dramatically impacting small businesses and women, women owned businesses in particular. So asking for help is key. This is not the time <laughs> to be suffering in silence. This right. is definitely not that time. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned briefly, uh, Kate, about um, debt consolidation. So mm-hmm. I want to circle and go back to that. So mm-hmm. in your opinion, is consolidating debt a good or a bad thing? And, and when when is it so? Yeah, again, I, I think that's really tricky. Um, and, and you probably want to uh, seek expert guidance and really making that decision because, again, it can extend the terms of your loan. It might, um, you know, decrease, again, your interest rate, but it, it can be so you just want to make sure you really think through, okay, what's the reason why I'm consolidating my debt? And um, is that, does it make the most sense for me? Mm-hmm. And even like, I feel like it brings us back to this concept of establishing good habits. Mm-hmm. So even, um, you know, uh, when, when I think about, you know, should you even take out any form of a debt? Like there are, it seems to be quite a conversation today that it's easier to take out loans today, you know, because of COVID than it was, you know, yesterday or than it will be in five years. So you need to just go ahead and apply for some loans and take out loans. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that kind of mentality is um, getting loans, you know, may they be like, it's almost like, like a sale like in Mm -hmm. retail, right? Mm -hmm. Getting, getting a loan right now because the interest rates are low and blah, 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 whether or not you need them. Like, what do you think about that mentality? Yeah. Yeah. You hear maybe people say the the phrase, like it's free money and it's not. Yeah. Um, It's not free. (laughs) Banks are businesses um, and they make money off of, off of us borrowing from them. And, and, you know, Mm -hmm. that's not necessarily a bad thing as well. Um, But there are a lot of other ways where you can, you know, maybe generate capital, um, in order for you to fund or operate your business. So of course this year, you know, there was the PPP loan, um, which depending on your business, you may or may not still be able to, to obtain that. Um, so that's something to consider, you know, there's so many grants and different types of funds that are available specifically for women or uh, minority owned businesses. So, you know, of course that's the, the genesis of this conversation being a part of, of why. So, I imagine most of us here are women that are looking at at how to um, raise capital for our business. So there's a lot of things that are accessible to you that might be, you know, true um, free money, you know, in the form of, again, a grant or other funds, but also, you you know, it might be an investor that you consider, or you can kind of go more of a private route, a family member, or, um, you know, somebody that just has an interest in helping you grow your business. So there are other things to consider. Those might not be as readily available to anyone and everybody, but certainly um, avenues worth exploring to see, you know, what are other ways in which I can, you know, help fund my business. Yeah, I love I love that you presented all of those different um, I-, I call them like avenues to cap capital, right? Um, let's I'm just gonna go down them. So you mentioned loans. So what may maybe they're forgivable through the government, like the PPP loan grants, um, independent financing and private investors. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that category seems to be one I've noticed seems to be one that people tend to forget about approaching Mm -hmm. independent financers and investors. So what would you say, like, if, if, you, you know, what would you say to small business owners who are considering approaching lenders or creditors or even private investors or independent financiers? What type of things do you think they should be thinking about while they're building that conversation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question too. And I think it goes back to kind of knowing what your numbers are and, you know, being able to communicate a compelling and strategic business plan. Um, You know, people want, if they're, you know, investing their money, they want to make sure that they're investing in something that's going to pay off for them as well. So being able to communicate that effectively and show, okay, here, here's where I started. Here's what my sales are. Here's what my assets are. Again, here's what my liabilities are. And debt is a part of that. Um, they're going to want to see what those numbers are. So being able to showcase, um, again, not only what your plan is, but what, what's the data of your business. That's going to be pretty critical. I love that. So I, 
I'm going to summarize and say, know your numbers, folks. <laughs> and, and those numbers, I love that you r- ran through. It's basically your balance sheet. You know, know your, know your assets, know your revenues, your income, um, know how they're growing or sinking, you know, and know um, your expenses, including your, your, um, your liabilities, meaning your debts, um, so that you can communicate that to someone who's w- trying to invest in your business, including banks. You know, so think I like to think of lenders, you know, banks as another form of investor, right? So they they want to know that they want to have that same conversation. Yeah. I almost I I like to like make it real plain, Kate. So sometimes when I'm thinking about um, business planning with my co- my clients, I always say like. Think about if, if you were to ask so-and-so, one of your friends for money, like, hey, Kate, can I borrow $1,000? Like, you're probably going to ask me some questions. Like, what do you need this money for? <laughs> like, what are you going to do with it? When are you going to pay me back? Are you paying me back $1,000 or 1000 plus? You know, what's yeah. that mean? And you know me. So that's what you're going to ask me as my friend. So someone who doesn't know me or know my business, they're obviously going to have more questions. Um, so I always like to make it plain and think about that. Like if you're approaching a lender, be it a bank or um, a creditor or, um, or a private investor, they're going to want to know those same things, just like your friend will want to know plus more. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. And, and a lot of times you may want to look into a lot of those options before you need them. Right. So you want I to know, agree, yeah. okay, like, you know, can I get a working capital loan or can I get a business line of credit? Um, and it's just the peace of mind knowing it's there in case you ever do need it, as opposed to waiting until it's very urgent. And now you have a lot of pressure on you. So, you know, being mindful of what some of those resources are before they become critical. Um, I think it's just another form of being a good business owner. I agree. And so while you're, what advice would you give to the business owner who's evaluating all of those different options, right? So we now, we went, we knew our numbers, we went through all the steps of like having these conversations and now everyone's, everyone wants to say yes, right? Mm-hmm. How do we evaluate, you know, um, again, evaluating that good versus bad debt, you know, how do we evaluate whether or not we want to do a line of credit or working capital loan or a grant or a PPP, mm-hmm. like what should, what kind of things should we be looking at? Yeah, another great question. So a lot, uh, what I would say is, is mainly the terms of the arrangement. So again, if it's something that, you know, it's, you know, free and clear, not something you have to pay back. That's probably the best, the best, uh, source of, uh, of income. Um, you know, if it is a loan again, how long do you have to pay the loan back? What is the interest rate? If it's an investor as well, it might be something more around, um, what is that investor bringing to the capital in addition to the capital? Mm. You know, maybe it's, um, you know, specific advice based on what they know about your industry and your business. So, you know, that that's worth something as well. So it's hard to say, um, you know, specifically without, uh, having the actual example, but again, I'd say terms and first rates are probably the biggest. I love that. So actually, Kay, you, I, here's how I would summarize it based off of what you said. Um, terms, the terms of the loan, the, the cost of the loan, because like you said, this is not free money, right? I mean, if it is, then that's awesome, right? Yeah. So the cost of a loan and then some of the benefits, there may be qualitative benefits, like you said, that if it's a, an investor and they're bringing, maybe they're exposing you to a different market as a, as a result of this um, yeah. arrangement. So there are qualitative benefits that are just, you know, just as beneficial as those quantitative benefits. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Yeah. They may have relationships or, you know, to your point, get you into different markets, help you scale. Yeah. So I'm going to pause a little bit for if, if those of you who may just be joining, I am talking with Kate Michaels from Northwestern Mutual, and we are discussing um, small business financing and debt. Um, so I want to pause a bit and see if there are any questions, um, maybe on Facebook or Zoom, Carolyn. I'll ask. Let's see in the chat. All right. So, and I do want to just, you know, just say if you do have questions as you're watching along, we absolutely love your questions. We want to answer them. 
Um, so just you feel free to use the chat and below or feel free to use the comments on Facebook. But so let's keep plugging along, Kate. So the other question I had for you, um, we talked a little bit about small business financing options. But one thing I think people, small business owners have really been shocked into during COVID is being creative about diversifying their, their income and looking at um, different ways to earn revenue and things like that. And I think, as you were mentioning, um, as we're, we're evaluating whether or not we should take out a debt, right? And we're looking down all of these steps. One thing we should be thinking of is how do we earn revenue and how can we be creative about those ways of earning revenue? What, what would you say about that based on your experience with um, clients this year, this year and last year in the wake of this crazy COVID time? <laughs> I know, I feel like we're still in the same year. Um, we're so we're so still there <laughs> right now. <laughs> Yeah, I think, so I was exposed uh, somewhere in reading or maybe a podcast of the concept of the gift of constraint. And I think that was one of the gifts we were given last year as business owners is when you have a lot of constraints on you, that's where creativity and genius is born. Um, Ooh, so I, I love that. There were so many cool things that happened um, for as much as much bad happened. Um, there was some good that happened as far as, you know, uh, a good old American ingenuity. And, and a lot of that, again, is driven by small business owners. So like an example would be like, I recently saw on Instagram, um, a local golf course that was doing setting. Like that's probably not something they would have done before had they had all of their summer golf revenue. Right. Um, right. So that was a really cool idea. I have a friend who, a uh, friend and client who runs a consulting business. And a lot of her clients were other business owners and she couldn't get speaking engagements. Now she's pivoted to more speaking um, in the higher education space because they're still open and they have budgets. So, you know, I think just continuing to look at ways you can pivot and not being afraid to rely on the good old networking um, for growing your business. I think sometimes we become over, overly reliant. That was the culture on social media. And that's, such an awesome way to create brand awareness and, and certainly acquire new clients um, for very minimal amount of um, income, but it does take a lot of time. And so don't be afraid to go go back to, you know, kind of quote, quote unquote, like pounding the pavement, like calling people, you know, figuring out ways to, to market yourself that are a little bit more traditional. Mm -hmm. um, that would be something that I would think about. And then, you know, you know, based on what business you have coming in, don't be afraid to maybe reduce the terms of invoices, you know, if you're not waiting for people to uh, pay you back, um, you know, of course, assuming you, you feel like they can, if they're not a, a business has been negatively impacted as well, you know, shorten the terms for your invoice. Uh, this might seem counterintuitive, but maybe even providing commentary services to get your name out there and, you know, create some more exposure that way. Um, and maybe look at pricing, like this could be a good opportunity to either raise or lower pricing and look at, you know, what are some, you might be able to be creative there. So those are all things that I've thought about, but, um, can also maybe help back to that. All incredible things, Kate, seriously. And just because of that, I'm, I'm going to run through them for those who may not have caught it. Um, I love the idea of evaluating pricing. Many, many businesses, especially small business owners, we get sort of stuck in, in a pricing rut and we forget to reevaluate our business, our um, pricing. I see this a lot in service industries. Um, we saw a huge impact on um, service industries this year, particularly um, day spas, um, you know, um, makeup artists, hairstylists, that kind of, those type of industries where they hadn't re, many of those business owners had not reevaluated their prices in decades, you know, and now as a result of being closed for several months and having to recuperate certain costs, they had time to look at them, you yeah. know? Um, so I think that is a, a great place to start looking at alternate um, services, maybe some, some of them are complimentary. You know, we saw a lot of retailers for the first time in many years offering free shipping, mm -hmm. you know, because mu much of our retail, um, much of our customers turned to online um, services. So as a way to encourage um, that and gift uh, customers for supporting you through these crazy times, a lot of retailers turned to free shipping. And um, 
I love the idea of returning to some traditional forms of marketing, traditional touch points, picking up a phone and calling customers. You know, <laughs> I love the idea of returning to that um, as a way to, to um, re return to that one-on-one -on -one, um, mm -hmm. service and business model. So evaluating whether or not that might work for your small business. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel like 2020 was really the year of the pivot for, for us. We might be reading that in a book somewhere in a few decades. So not relying on traditional forms of um, promoting or, or generating revenue. So traditional forms of marketing or traditional streams of revenue. So I loved that many business owners last year and going forward are looking at you know, new and unique ways to generate business, sort of like your golf course now turning into a sledding place. I want to take my daughter there. So you'll have to send me, <laughs> <laughs> send me that info. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, you know, again, it's that gift of constraint. Like even though COVID's going on and we still got bills to pay, whether it be for our business and we need to make, generate income to live our personal lives. So you know, the, these uh, debts will still need to be paid and our bills will still, still be there. So get creative. Mm -hmm. And that, that may actually be an opportunity to look at, um, look at j taking on some more debt in order to bring some of those new non-traditional ideas to fruition. So mm -hmm. that is, you know, I can see that Kate as another opportunity for small business owners to sort of look at it as a growth model. You know, you may be, I don't know, maybe you are, um, I, I've seen a lot of physical therapists turn to online um, online solutions and that would require a different type of investment. So now they have to invest in new equipment and things like that um, in order to offer these online services to their clients. Or even like we've seen theater, you know, online theaters and online yoga studios and all of these things, you know. In order to do that for your business, it may require a loan or it may require you to go enter into some debt and using some of these phenomenal tools that Kate gave us, you can evaluate whether or not that's a good idea. Right. Absolutely. So let's go to, let's turn to, I have a question, Kate, about evaluating these good ideas and whether or not we should take on debt. You mentioned one of the things you should evaluate is whether or not it'll be a good return on investment. And I feel like small business owners hear this a lot and it's a little bit of a cliche statement. Mm -hmm. So what would you say that mean, that should mean to um, a small business owner? Yeah, so, uh, you know, really what, what I think what the phrase at least means to me is if you're going to invest or borrow or take on a certain amount of of debt or again maybe it's an investor that you're paying an interest rate back to um you need to make sure that you're at least generating the, enough to pay that back and then some um so that's really what what that would mean is that it's it's not going you're not going to take out fifty thousand dollars in debt to only make thirty thousand for that investment you know mm -hmm. none of us would really want to do something like that and again you know there are risks so you might end up being in a situation where you end up taking a risk that doesn't pay off and that's okay too that's part of being a business owner you're taking on those risks and you're going to learn from it and maybe grow from that um but by and large you want to look at okay is this going to be worthwhile and ultimately am i going to be able to recoup my investment pay it back and hopefully have some additional income. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, I love to be a little honest and transparent here. It's scary to do that. You know, yeah. like it's really scary to, to especially think about ways of growing your business and actually like jumping out there and doing something non-traditional. Um, but when you, when you talk about this return on investment and how you evaluate whether or not you should do that, um, I like to think of it is like you had mentioned, there is a cost to this debt, right? It's not free money. And if it is, that's awesome. Definitely do that. <laughs> um, but usually there's some, there is some cost and you should be thinking about what that cost is and your return should be at least that cost plus something. And what is that plus something? Maybe it is a quantitative benefit. Maybe it's a plus, you know, um, some more financial. So maybe you're profiting off of it. Or maybe it's a qualitative benefit where um, you, your growth, you're growing your business. So you're, you're investing in your business to grow into a different market mm -hmm. um, that will pay off 
you know, down the road, or it just diversifies your, your customer base or your, your uh, market segments so that in the future, you know, when we have another COVID or something similar, you don't have to rely on just this one stream of income. Right. Exactly. We see this, like I'm, I'm used to that model from my old corporate days, like large cor- corporations think this way. And I, and I feel like small business owners, sometimes we have to think a little big, right? Large um, companies, one of the ways that they're able to survive in like down markets is by diversifying those corporations so that when one market, when they're down in one area, because that one area is in one market, they're up, they may be up in another area um, because that market is doing well. So then their, their business is able to survive the test of time, you know? Um, so that's, I, I think that's a creative concept for small business owners to sort of think about, um, think about the um, ways that they can diversify and, and not rely on such traditional forms of operating. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what other, Kate, what other things, or I would say, what other situations have you seen your clients going through during this um, crazy COVID time in terms of financing their business um, and staying afloat? Yeah, yeah, great question. So I think the di- diversification piece of business is is was imperative um, for, for individuals I worked with this past year, just getting creative. And you're a good example of that too, Sarisa, with Gypsy Freedom, all the fun things <laughs> that try. you've done. I this try, year. girl. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, the other things I would say is, you know, develop relationships with local uh, lenders. So mm. again, I think oftentimes, you know, um, you might you might see individuals that um, end up turning to larger institutions for banking or lending. And not to say that's bad at all, but I think it's it's really important to have somebody you can just walk in and talk to and say, listen, like, you know, here's what's going on in my business, communicate with them. They might be more, more willing if it's a local um, lender to work with you to even give you that money uh, uh, to mm-hmm. begin with. Or if you are struggling for some you know, reason, it's a touch point, it's somebody that you can go to that that cares about the community that you live in. So that would be, you know, something else that I've seen people do this last year, especially when it came down to the PPP law, and like, you you know, it was better to work with somebody local to be able to do that. So, you know, having that relationship and being able to um, have that touch point, um, I think is really important. And then Mm -hmm. also get ahead of um, communicating that you again, you might be behind or you're, you're might be struggling to pay. Um, you know, in which case, again, maybe they can help you with refinancing options for a loan or, you know, um, maybe waive a, a late fee for that month. So I think that that's something that's really important. And again, these local businesses, they banks and lenders, like they want to do business with you because they have that um, genuine interest in helping develop and grow the community as well. So that would be something that I would really uh, encourage everyone to do is, is have those relationships. I, I love that you brought up communication because I think one thing as a small business owner that we have, or just in general, in, in our culture, we've been taught to hide the bad things, right? To like, oh, let's just close that door. That's my junk room, you know, to hide those, those, those messy parts of our lives. And COVID, COVID made everything messy, <laughs> You know, like we're all messy. We all are hot messes out here. So being transparent, especially with your lenders and creditors in a way that's strategic, right? We don't want to just give the show them all our, (laughs) all of our mess and scare them away, but in a way that's strategic, um, you know, could be helpful. So like communicating, you know, if you think you're going to be behind before being behind, you know, right. and, and when you think you're going to be on, on, on track and, and what types of things you are doing in your business to be on track, I think is a great strategy to have as a business owner. It's definitely one I have not heard anyone open and honestly talk about. So I love that you shared that, Kate. Yeah. What, um, what about tools and resources? So are there any tools and resources that you would, that you've come across that you would suggest or share? Like, what do you use to sort of manage your business bank account and manage your, um, your debt and cash flows and things like that? Yeah, great question. So a couple of different things. So one, you want to have a budget for your business, again, just like you'd have for yourself personally. 
and really be honest about what the reality is of that budget. You know, what do you have coming in from a revenue standpoint? What are your expenses? And then what do you do if you're ahead or behind? So, you know, from a, a resource or tool standpoint, I would say, you know, use yourself as a resource and make sure, as I shared earlier, you're spending time, whether it be daily, weekly, monthly, like kind of keeping an appointment with yourself to look at, okay, what's the reality of what's going on in my business right now? And that's what I think great business businesses do, great leaders do, like they face reality, good or bad. So, you know, don't run from it because it's going to catch up to you. So get on top of that. So that would be a resource evaluating the finances, using a budget, um, you know, looking at, again, your balance sheet as a business, um, connecting with that local banker would be another tool or resource, you know, leveraging um, people like myself, financial advisors in the community that might be able to point you in, in a direction um, and just share some insight on things that we might know or hear. Um, and then probably another tool that I don't know that many business owners think about, but it might be leveraging some type of um, like a disability overhead expense because, you know, you want to plan for un, unplanned things in your business. So what we're talking about in this whole topic is being able to pay back your debt. And so you want to think about well, what would happen if I couldn't pay back my debt or what would happen if, you know, I couldn't work and generate an income? Um, what would that look like? So kind of planning for the, the risks that come in um, to, to running a business as well, because these lenders are still going to want to make sure that they're paid, even if you know, you're not able to work. So you want to think about those things. And then, you know, as best as you can just operate in a cash environment. Again, I know that's not always realistic. And, you know, there might be some months you can do that as compared to others, which is where getting ahead of that and having some kind of working capital loan or having access to, you know, business line of credit is really helpful. But, you know, those are some things that I would suggest. And as you shared, Sarisa, don't be embarrassed about, you know, seeking help. Like none of us have all of you know, the best uh, information and, you know, we're the, you know, we don't have the market cornered on great advice. So like, you know, go out there and seek, seek input from others. And this is nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed of. Is now, you, so one resource that I feel like business owners forget to tap into are people, right? So people yeah. resources in, you know, we have, many of us have mentors and advisors. Is there such a thing as a debt advisor? Um, not that I'm familiar with. And I, I think that goes back to more of like, you know, uh, working with a local banker or a local financial advisor, um, you know, and, and these people aren't, you know, you're not necessarily paying them to sit down and talk to them. Um, but certainly people that, you know, you could form a relationship with and have kind of on speed dial. So when you have those one-off questions or an accountant would be another example of that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even talking like the Dementor or calling your, uh, friends at the Y center, you know, people do want to help. Like we live in such a caring, collaborative community, like take advantage of the fact that people have so much pride in this community and are so willing to support local business owners that, you know, um, you're, you're going to get love um, if you turn to the individuals for help. Yeah. And I think, you know, one other area um, that you can use people as a resource is best practice sharing. So yeah. reaching out to other business owners who are in the same industry as you who do this well, or, you know, who have been doing this for a long time, you know, reaching out to them and sharing, you know, hey, how are you doing this? And, you know, here's how I'm doing it. Or how did you do such and such, you know, or what are your typical, you know, ways to do X, Y, Z? It, it really does, you know, it does take a bit of transparency um, to, to do that. But best practice sharing is definitely a great way to grow um, and use people as a resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that humility goes a long way. And I think, naturally as, as human beings, like we, we'd be wired to kind of seek out, Hey, what, what is like a competitor doing or what is someone else in my industry doing? And there's value yeah. in that, but yeah. there's also so much value in seeing there are people in different industries or businesses doing to your point, kind of asking somebody that you look up to in the community, like, Hey, I'm struggling with this. Can I just pick the pain. Um, I can't imagine someone's going to turn you down for that. Yeah. I cross industry, um, sharing is, I think, really key. You know, I learned that in my corporate days, like 
have mentors all over the place, <laughs> you know, right. whether they're in your industry, in your company, everywhere, you know, um, you can never have too much feedback. It's up to you to filter that and, and, and use it to your advantage, but you can certainly never have too much feedback, especially on a topic as uncomfortable as the dollars and cents, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to jump back a little bit to some of the tools you mentioned, just in case some folks did not catch it. Um, but I love you mentioned have a budget, you know, have a plan for what what I call your actual versus forecast in your budget, you, so, which means you have to be looking at it both times. You got to look at the, the budget, the forecast, and then you got to look at what actually happened and have a plan for what happens um, with that actual I love your, your um, concept of have a plan for that worst case scenario. You know, what happens when you um, can't pay your rent or what happens when you can't pay your debt and blah, blah, blah. Like, what, are, what is your plan for that? I know we don't always want to plan to fail. You know, that's certainly not in our gut as business owners, which is why we enter these crazy risky ideas. Um, but you should always have a worst case scenario and you should have a plan for that. Um, so I love that. And I love it. I, I haven't heard it called this disability overhead expense before. So is that what that is? That worst case scenario plan? Yeah, it's more, more or less if like you were out of work for an extended period of time and those are the unplanned things and it's not, Hey, I broke my leg and I can't show up to work. It's more around like, Hey, what if there's something you know, with mental health that holds you back from running your business or, you know, like a, you needed to be out to handle a cancer or chemo, you know, it's, there's, there's thousands of ways that we can be become disabled at some point in time. And, you know, based on the last years I saw from the American Academy of Actuaries, women have a 25% chance of being out of work for some period of time. Um, and that ends up being roughly two years. So if that does happen and us as business owners, we don't have the benefit of having somebody provide benefits to us. If you right. want to be prepared for that. And again, these lenders, they're still going to want to be paid even if you can't generate an income. So, you know, it's, it's really transferring that risk to, you know, having some kind of um, insurance for that. I love that also um, from an operating perspective um, because it lends itself to succession planning, mm -hmm. like um, for people who are business in business for themselves, so small business owners who they are the business, right? So if I am a therapist, like it's me, you know. So what happens when I can't, you know, operate um, operate the business? So having some form of a succession plan um, in place as well. I, so I love that concept. Um, we talked about leveraging resources and people. Um, I love your um, your tip on making sure we're setting that time aside to be business owners, right? And, and I see this a lot with um, creatives. I see this a lot with um, business owners who are very passionate about the actual operating side of their business and not so much the payroll and all of these things. And yes, you can outsource that out, but you should certainly be setting time aside on your calendar, especially if you are the owner and CEO of your business, you should be setting time aside on your calendar to operate. Yeah. So there should be CEO hours, you know, on your calendar. And it may force you to look into, um, maybe that's how you expand your business into and look into hiring an employee to give yourself that hour or two to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to call it business formation time, you know, so you, it's an appointment with yourself. It's a date with yourself and your business, just like you would treat your client. You would set that time aside and no, you can't double book it. That's your time, you know? Um, so, and then we talked about budgeting and planning um, and using people as a resource. So I genuinely, I, Kate, you were incredible today. Such great tidbits. Um, I'd like to offer, you know, our last few minutes on any other tips and suggestions to consider. So some parting words that you will provide to our small business owners. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for your lovely hosting skills. Um, <laughs> It's a skill. It's an art to be able to manage a conversation in real time like that and be able to share share back um, what you heard as well. So nice, nice work. Um, but yeah, I think overall, again, the, the common theme here that we talked about today was that 
again, you're, you're a business owner. So you naturally are going to have to take on some level of risk. And most often that's in the form of debt. That's okay. It's very normal. Nothing to, to be ashamed about. Um, <laughs> just, you know, think about ways to be most efficient with that debt when you do have it um, and figure out uh, above all, like how do you use this debt to scale and grow your business? Because again, at the end of the day, you're trying to create and generate an asset for yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. And then again, don't be afraid to, to get help or um, leverage the resources that you have or that exist in order um, to help you be most uh, effective in operating your small business. Awesome. I love it, Kate. Thank you so much. Um, before we go, I just want to leave a, a bit of time for questions and answers. And if there are no questions, we'll just hop off. So Carolyn, one more double check. Any questions or um, comments coming through on Facebook? And can I have a question? Absolutely. Hi, everybody. This is Sheena. Um, Hi. I really enjoyed the meeting. And I need, Kate, I need you to put your information up again because from the last meeting, I tried to take notes and write it down, and I cannot keep up with my emails. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it in the chat. I'll put girl, my chat I, I already have adaptive software to help with my disability. Now I need something to help me keep track of other stuff. <laughs> 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 like, okay, my question to you are hi, Sarisa. How are you? I'm um, good. How are you? All right, thank <laughs> you. Um, I really wanted to ask y'all a couple of questions, so I'm gonna try to do do it one at a time just in case somebody else wants to talk. Um, awesome. What do y'all think about constant contacts? Okay, because basically when I get into the revenue and retail selling of my products and services, I want to use a system that's not Clover. I know what system I want to go with. I've done my research on this system. I've um, talked with the company, I mean, for months. They used to talk to me all the time. And it's a better system if you have a restaurant to me. Mm-hmm. And you have retail as well. Let's say you make baked goods or whatever, but you mm-hmm. don't want to work at a mercury, but you can still keep track of your inventory and everything with this system. Okay. It's called cool. NCR. Hmm. Okay. Look, and if anybody have food or or like catering and they don't know what kind of system, it's a point of sale system to keep your inventory. You can put in how much money you pay for your items as well. And it'll give you like a, a synopsis or a collage of what your profit margin could be if you wanted this percentage profit, if you wanted this percent profit, uh, what profit margin you'll need to break even to not be in the red, you know, stuff like that. Um, because for a long time from the beginning, I found out I wasn't negative most of the time. I was just breaking even most of the time. Right. It appeared to be negative. But when I learned how to formulate what was coming in and what was going out, learn how to multiply, divide it, and subtract it, I <laughs> always came out with what I started with. I was never negative. Mm-hmm. I always cool. got that number I had when I started more than once. And if you can get that number three times, you're really on track. And it's like three, it's not an even number, but it's about even the odd numbers matching. Mm-hmm. So, and it does with because it's a formula it's a new math formula and I tell some of my friends how to do it and I'm like and I'm artistic I, I didn't have nobody teaching me finances I so was, you're I, talking about Sheena the break even um concept. yeah I'd rather break even to be mm-hmm. negative that's just, yeah. that's yeah. better than being negative because sometimes so, you can be negative a dollar and then you got two hundred dollars in negative charges before your deposit come in and you just screwed already <laughs> so let's so did you so let's get to your question though so what was your your question about your break-even concept or I don't know how I sale? break even but I do so my thing is what do y'all think about constant context I noticed you said Sarisa is a good method to have some type of direct contact with your customers and I agree mm-hmm. but if you don't have customers, what good is constant contact for? I mean, and I feel like I'm learning as I'm going because, like, I had all of this stuff in the past, but I had the clients, but I wasn't getting paid. So I've been on every end you could think of. How I've many been, um, years have you been in business? 
a long time. I'm gonna put it that way. Too long to be look too long to be here learning. <laughs> you know what is your business? Never. Um, my business, Kate, is I I'm not freelance, I'm licensed in the field that I went into. Okay. And so I just basically took the whole field, which I told you before is I went into cosmetology. But okay. I'm on the nutritional side, the scientific side of nutrition the scientific and the anatomy side of your body i'm on the nutritional side of your nerves oh. our nerves have a nutritional side too what's the name of your business the mirror's image that the is mirror's image uh-huh m-i-r-r-o-r-s apostrophe image and you and you said you you're not sure how you are breaking even and you wanted to know that's because about... i've always self-invested that's why i'm breaking even mm-hmm. i just don't know how i'm breaking even i mean so country. one thing to look at sheena and i think as um business owners we forget to look at this is to look at the total your total business cost so you may say you're breaking even based on um your expenses, like what you're spending, but you, you also want to look at the total cost of your business. So if you, you said you self-invest. So if you are putting in your own cash, like that's a cost, right? Mm -hmm. That is, that is a cost. And it's been costing me everything. Yeah. So you should be looking at that. Like how much are you putting in every month? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, or in a certain period of time. So say you're only evaluating a month, like how much are you putting in? How, where are you operating? If you're operating Mm. at home, that's a cost, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. you're, um, you know, look at, you know, how, what does it cost you to operate in the space that you're operating at in your, in your home? Even if you wanted to like divide it up evenly based on the square footage of your home, Mm. that's a cost that you should build in. So you may, you may either be not breaking even, or you may actually be earning a profit based on, on your total cost and your total revenue. You know what Mm. I mean? So that's one mm-hmm. thing to look at. And then mm. if you if you do that for a couple of months, you'll start to notice some trends. So you'll start to notice, well, I'm I, Sheena, am putting in X amount of dollars of cash every month to do some whatever to, to mm. buy this. You know, maybe I should look at, you know, whatever if you're you're buying a certain ingredient, maybe I should look at a lower cost ingredient, or maybe I should look at eliminating this ingredient or something like that. Kate, would you have any um, suggestions for Sheena based on what I just said? No, I think that's really great. And, you know, that's where a good accountant can help into uh, to Teresa's point, figuring out what are some of those maybe expenses that you can write off as a business owner. And then, you know, going back to what I shared around ways to generate new revenue. And like you said, you know, it's, you can't use a constant contact if you don't necessarily have people in your database <laughs> yet. So going out and figuring out, okay, who would want my products and services and how do I just call them, establish a relationship, maybe get referred to that uh, other business that you can collaborate with or, you know, figure out who your ideal client is and how do you start researching those people and start making those connections. Yeah. Well, and I love that question. Everyone, the reason is for everyone is for so many reasons. It'll take me too long to explain that, but it's for everyone because I, I presented this to the CDC and the Department of Health before I even started coming to Wise and the SBA and all of that for funding and help and all of that and the trainings um, because I'm here for my trainings and certifications, not just, you know, to get partners or whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I got blessed enough to get a mentor outside of you all too as well. <laughs> I was referred to y'all from the SBA, but mm-hmm. I was um, lucky and blessed enough to get a mentor that's already certified in what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And my stuff is original. Like I didn't tell anybody anything that I'm doing, how I'm doing it, what I want to do. Because actually I have taken cosmetology into the field and made it as an entrepreneur. It's now considered personal care. And I can get government contracting under personal care because it's not just retail and trade. I'm mm-hmm. not trading anything. Like I'm giving services, but the personal care part means I can yeah. go into the nursing field now and help people with so, that. So I know services. Kate. I know Kate has to drop off because we're going over one o'clock, but Sheena, I'd love to thank you for your question. I'd love to offer this for you and any others who are watching. So WISE, the Women's Business Center, offers free one-on-one coaching. I think I heard that you mentioned you, you're familiar with WISE. So any of you wa- watching, before we say goodbye, 
Um, if you have additional questions as it relates to this session or would like that one-on-one -on -one, um, time to meet with us, please reach out to the Wise Women's Business Center. Our contact information will be shared on Facebook and we would love to provide that. So Sheena, I'd love to thank you for your question. I'd love to thank everyone for watching today. Again, I'm Sarisa Richardson. I was your host today. And Kate, thank you so much. Her information is also in our chat and on Facebook. So thank you all for joining and we will see you at our next Power Hour. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Of course.